Welcome to all today, this Trillium Flow Technologies webinar sessions. The today topics is reducing pump operating expenses and CO2 emission. If you have any question, please use the QA tab on the Zoom windows at the end of the presentation. We'll do our best to answer you. Thank you. Today, the presenter shall be myself and my colleague Alessandro. My name is Marco, I have over 50 years experience in 3D flow technology and before entering mechanic after say department technical and sales. Actually, I'm in charge as retrofit specialist in the technical department of the Markets division. I'm master graduate in aeronautical aerospace engineer in University of Pisa. Laudio. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Alessandro Nicchio, and I've been working since uh, 2006 in the pump industry after my degree in mechanical engineering. I've spent most of my career in R&D department, focusing on new pump design, but now I'm in charge as an engineering uh, manager in the Trillium Pumps Italy aftermarket division. First of all, let me give you a quick overview of Trillium Flow Technology brand portfolio. Our product brand names are synonymous within the pump and valve industries. With pump brands, we have Bagman, Flowway, Gabionetta, Rotojet, Wemco, USP, at last but not least, thermomechanical pump. For our valve products, we have Atwood Merrill, Autotorque, Betley, Blackborough, Hopkinson, Sarazen, Seben, Tricentric, and finally, Threadpoint. In the right part of these slides, you found a trillion global worldwide presence. We are supply chain that spans globe or key manufacturing and service center located in Canada, China, France, India, Italy, Middle East, South Korea, UK, and USA, clearly. Globally, we have over 20 facilities around the world, plus a global network of third-party sales and authorized service center. Trillium Flow Technologies has a long history, since 1828. In the two centuries, Trillium added new products, new services, and innovates its product itself to make the customer or customer process more efficient and productive. Recently, in 2020, we added the red point on, our, on Trillium Flow Technology. In 2021, a thermomechanical pump joined our family. In these slides, you can, you can see a product uh, uh, overview regarding the centrifugal pumps based on HI Hydraulic Institute and API American Petroleum Institute standards. The first row are overhang pump designated from OH1 to H OH5. The second row is the between bearing pumps designated as BB from B BB1 to BB5. And the last row is the vertical pumps from West 1 to West 7. All over this, we are able to produce pumps, not in API standard or another standard like a concrete volute pump or all type of centrifugal oil, uh, screw pumps that are uh, necessary for the uh, using in the plant like oil and gas, water and wastewater plant, desalination plant, power plant and general industry like uh, steel manufacturing or mining. Now I give the floor to my colleague Alessandro to introduce today's topics. Okay, so let's start presenting the two major topics of today's session. We will be talking about the OPEX, that is the sum of all costs incurred while operating a certain equipment, a pumping system in our case, and CO2 reduction, both considering, of course, the emission due to energy production, but also all the emissions that are associated to the manufacturer and maintaining the equipment itself going more details and analyzing a typical pump life cost. We can see in the left side of the slide that operating costs are more than, uh, more than 75% of, uh, of the total of pump life cost. And uh, within these, uh, the cost of energy and maintenance accounts for the major part of the total cost. Now, this subdivision of the cost gives uh, us a clear indication of the most uh, important aspect to focus on. So uh, there are th three main ways to reduce uh, OPEX. First of all, uh, reducing the energy consumption, then improving the availability and extends the pump life, and then gaining access to CO2 reduction compensation credit. These are also the three main topics of discussion of our webinar today, as we can see in today's agenda. So we'll be discussing about uh, 
the impacts uh, of uh, and the carbon footprint of footprint of operating a pump, reducing the energy consumption. Why it is important and how we can do that? Improving the equipment reliability through material and design upgrades. And we'll be also showing some case studies, some practical case study, studies. And of course, as Marco was mentioning at the beginning, there will be a space for a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Now, let's start from the first topic, which is reducing the energy consumption, and why it's really important and effective. Next slide, please. Okay, so as you can see from this slide, Almost two thirds of electrical power used in a general industry used by, is used by motor driven equipment. And among uh, motor driven equipment, pumps account uh, roughly for 25%. So this means that there is a huge potential of saving, saving in pumping system. And this saving may represent a significant cost reduction for, uh, for a whole industry site. When we talk about uh, operating cost in this context, the word cost has a wider meaning as it includes also the environmental cost that can be measured and quantified in terms of CO2 emission. And from this point of view, there is a strong link between cutting the cost and reducing the emissions. As every human activity operating a pumping system causes CO2 emissions. So often the major source of CO2 is directly related to the production of power that is required to drive, uh, to drive the pumping equipment. But the way a pump is operated and maintained is also extremely important to determine uh, uh, how much the CO2 emission can be avoided or uh, otherwise increased. So for example, CO2 emission, uh, actually increase uh, when uh, we are operating a pump that has lost its efficiency through the years, or they increase when we are running a pump far from the design point, uh, or when we are running very old units uh, with a poor design and a poor efficiency, or vice versa, they, CO2 emissions increase when we replace a unit that instead could have its life extended, and therefore we are not avoiding the emission that are associated to the production of a new unit. So to conclude our introduction, we should also remember that uh, acting on a specific pumping unit uh, will uh, also have uh, additional benefits on the system as a whole. So there will be direct benefits, uh, such as the reduction of the power supply utilities and the equipment associated, an increase of overall uh, availability, and an extension of uh, the system operating life. And there will be also indirect benefits, as we have mentioned, so the reduction of emission to atmosphere and the possibility to compensate the cost sustained for a system improvement by CO2 credits. Okay, thank you, Alessandro. Now in this section, we introduce the CO2 as part of possible saving linked with pump operation. As you know, in the past year, many studies and reports and the path evidence two aspects in the world's energy scenario. The first is the great increase in energy demand in the future. The second one is the forecast of CO2 increasing too. These two aspects have created a parallel increase in demand of efficient, sustainable and high efficiency product, forcing several institutions to investigate the possibility to renewable and efficient technologies. This trend, however, can include the existing installment base, where the product, machine, or plant have been designed and built many years ago, and the result now in efficiency or polluting. In this scenario, this two scenario, the energy consumption is made due by fossil sources, with an increase in renewable energy in the future. In this, tran in this transition years, the role of energy efficiency product products can play an important contribution in CO2 emission reduction. The possibility of efficiency to upgrade industrial system offer a very good opportunity for retrofits that are environmental friendly and have the possibility of a relatively short return of investment. In this optic, as I said before by Alessandro, there are two types of benefit, direct in the consuming and maintenance, and direct in aspect, in aspect and terms of CO2 reduction mechanism that allow credits. Starting from 2005, the Kyoto Protocol established that the industrialized country needed to reduce the emission of a certain percentage, starting from 5% and modulating year by year based on the market and the international situation. This in order to mitigate the climate change and reduce the global warming. A series of mechanisms are foreseen to create a market of the emission, rewarding the countries that reduce the CO2. 
One of these systems is called the clean development mechanism. This mechanism is applicable on a series of countries, specifically in a developing country, that are defined by the protocol. And is applicable also in industrial project with pumping system. This, in the, in the, left, in the right of the, the slides, is a, a typical scheme or methodology for the pumping system. The main concept is that the pumping system are powered by electricity or other drivers that produce CO2 directly or indirectly. A reduction of pump energy consumption is directly linked with a reduction of CO2 emission. To gain credit, a project in pumping system must demonstrate that after modification, the consumption have been reduced, maintaining the same output. Okay. Okay, so we are focusing now on the first way of cutting OPEX and CO2. That is, of course, energy reduction of the piping system. Okay, let's first consider a simple piping system that comprises two tanks connected by a pipeline and including a valve and, of course, a pump. So in order to transfer liquid from tank A to tank B, some power has to be transferred from uh, the pump to the pumped fluid so that it can win the resistance of the fluid flowing through the pipeline, mainly due to friction and dissipation vortex, as it would occur uh, at uh, every elbow and, of course, uh, in the valve. If the two tanks are located at a different height uh, or kept at a certain pressure difference, uh, then some uh, heads needs to be supplied also to overcome this different pressure or potential energy between the two tanks. Uh, and that's, uh, this is the so-called uh, system static head. On top of this uh, system static head, then a certain amount of head, depending on the flow rate, shall be also supplied by the pump to, again, to, to let the flow circulate in the pipeline. And this is the system dynamic head. And this will depend uh, on the square of the flow rate and the geometry of the pipeline. So mainly, mainly the pipe diameters, the length of the pipeline, the presence of bends and, elbow, uh, and elbows, the roughness of the pipe itself, and of course, as we mentioned, the presence of valve. Of course, uh, the system losses uh, can be increased by closing the valve. So valves are elements that can vary the system uh, loss curve because they artificially introduce additional losses in the system. Now, knowing pipeline characteristic, we can draw the system head loss curve as it shown in green in this figure. The figure, the, the, the curve basically showing the total head required at any given volume of flow rate uh, transfer from tank A to tank B. Considering the pump instead, we surely know the head that uh, is provided by the pump at a given flow. And this is the uh, head versus flow rate curve, the, which is drawn in, uh, in black in the figure. Now, the flow rate at which the two curves intersect represents the equilibrium point of the system, at which all the power used by the pump is used to overcome the losses in the pipeline, almost all the power, and it will be the flow rate at which the system will operate in steady state condition. So, going into more details, the amount of power required by the pump uh, will depend on the volumetric flow rate, the total differential head required that we have seen is the sum of the process head and system losses, the fluid density, and of course, the, uh, by the pump efficiency. So this, from this formula, it's evident that there are two aspects to be considered to minimize the pump absorbed power. The first, optimizing uh, the working points, so the flow rate and the differential head requirements of the system. That means uh, given a fixed flow rate, minimizing the piping losses, basically, and second, increasing the pump efficiency. So let's start from considering the system as a whole and therefore optimizing uh, flow uh, and differential net. Considering, as I said, that we can change the flow requirements nor the piping layout usually, we can only act on the eventual excess of lead, which is provided by the pump as a safety margin, but then is dissipated into valves. While it seems uh, an, obvious, an obvious concept, uh, this is uh, uh, it's the most common industry practice to take wide margin uh, on pump head and then use valves uh, to regulate the flow. The key concept here is that uh, controlling the flow by throttling implies a waste of energy and the system, an amount of this system over design. And therefore, this should be carefully evaluated. So optimizing flow ahead means in practice uh, asking a reply to the following question. 
So what are the actual head requirement by the process and how much of the head provided by the pump is normally dissipated? Is the existing pump currently dimensional or is it over designed? Furthermore, it is also important to notice that centrifugal pump operating on low flow have a lower efficiency and most of the time they also operate outside the preferred operating region. That is the flow rate in which they have the maximum life standard. So there is a further potential of the improvements uh, considering the pump uh, whole performance, uh, adjusting and regulating the best operating point of the pump. Next slide, please. So uh, reducing the excess of head generated by a pump uh, means uh, basically that the, the pump curve shall be modified to intersect the system curve closer to the desired flow rate. So in this way, all the pump. Uh, uh, all the power used by the pump is used actually as a, to move the fluid along the pipeline. And there is no order or a minimum head dissipated into valve for regulation. So there are two ways of doing so. So moving the pump curve to a better intersection with the system curve. First two options, the first option, which is shown on the left side, is changing the pump speed, usually without any change in pump hydraulics that uh, in this, the picture on the left, you can see different uh, pump curve in green at different speed. So as the speed is reduced, you see the pump curve, which is modified and intersecting the system curve at different uh, flow rate. The second option instead is uh, to practically change some of the hydraulic components of the pump uh, so that uh, the pump curves completely change and there's an intersection to the system curve at a different flow rate as shown on the right side. Now, comparing the two methods, we can appreciate the pros and cons of each one. So change the pump by uh, varying the speed, uh, ensure uh, the best flexibility of operation as uh, the working point of the system can be changed. It works best in system where the system curve is mainly frictional, so the dynamic head uh, as the major part as it allows uh, the pump operating point to be closer to the best efficiency point of the pump at all speed. It reduces the peak uh, in starting motor absorber current, and it allows for smooth operating the transient, uh, minimizing the risk of very pressure peak within the line or sudden bumps opening or closing. But uh, changing the speed requires, however, additional equipment and system modifications. So instead of regrating an existing pump to completely change its pump curves uh, as uh, advantages uh, in which uh, it has the lower cost of for modification, which is normally limited to the pump uh, internals, there is no increase in system complexity. So all the modification is contained within the pump, basically. It works best where the operating point is normally fixed or with minor changing but uh, it's theoretically slightly less effective compared to speed change regulation as uh, the control valves uh, are still required. So let's focus on the regulation by changing the speed. So in order to change a pump operating speed, there are two main options uh, again. So the first one is adding an hydraulic coupling, which sometimes can be combined with a gearbox. So that uh, given a fixed motor speed, the pump shaft speed can be modulated within a certain range. Or the second option is to drive the electric motor by means of a variable frequency driver. So although there are small losses associated to both equipment in terms of energy absorbed, changing the pump speed provides a huge benefit on pump absorbed power at, uh, because it is, it is proportional to the cube of the speed. So for example, running a pump at half speed requires only one eighth of the power. Considering instead uh, the, the shift of the pump system curve by the pump curve by rating the pump by uh, changing its hydraulic, uh, again, there are several, there are two options basically. So the first is uh, uh, the physical replacement of some pump components to modify the pump curve. So this new hydraulic may be already available and installed with a minimum effort when the pump are designed with a modular concept. In other cases, instead, new hydraulics can be specifically developed to best fit a specific operating condition. Um, so the, the picture on the left shows uh, an example of a, a vertical pump rebowling. Here you can see the casing and the impeller that are changed, keeping the remaining part of the pump completely unchanged. 
A second common option available to re-rate, uh, especially for minor correction, is simply the impeller trimming. So in which the existing impeller right outer diameter is reduced, and therefore it is reduced the surplus in head provided by the pump. So although this is a very simple intervention, it can be extremely effective, as again, the absorbed power is proportional to the cube of the diameter at the first approximation. So let's instead considering the reduction of uh, power uh, by increasing the pump efficiency. So main sources of power dissipation inside the pump are the leakages of the fluid between the rotating and stationary parts, as it occurs in wear rings, uh, balancing drum, and interstage bashing. So there are volumetric leakages. Losses due to friction of the fluids uh, with the all the hydraulic surfaces and vortex that are, of course, related to the surface roughness and the hydraulic design of the pump itself. And then we have the mechanical losses, again, because of friction at bearings and mechanical seal. So the contribution of each of these factors to overall efficiency differs greatly from pump to pump. For example, volumetric losses, so the losses associated to leakages, are important with high head and low flow application. Why, for example, mechanical losses are generally negligible except for uh, small units. So let's consider on the volumetric losses. So the energy dissipated into leakages. So whenever a gap occurs between two regions at a different pressure, a leakage will flow from the higher to lower pressure region. So this is actually the case at impeller wear rings that aim to isolate the impeller side chambers that are at a higher pressure from the suction region. But the presence of the gap allows some of the fluid to be recirculated back to the suction of the impeller. And this implies a wasting of the mechanical power that was provided by the impeller to increase the pressure the head of this volume of fluid. So the greater the leakage, therefore, the, the pressure differential across the wear rings, the higher is the power dissipated by this recirculation. So dissipation in leakages are important to be discussed for two reasons, because it shows that why a pump running with uh, worn wear rings are absorbing more power, and after a form more expensive to run, and it represents uh, an opportunity for increase of pump efficiency by changing the shape and uh, the clearance of these wear rings in order to minimize the leakage. So most commonly, uh, reducing uh, the clearance of the wear rings uh, allows for a higher efficiency as it, shows, as it is shown on the right side of the slides. So often 2 to 3% efficiency can be gained by reducing uh, typical clearances at the wear rings, for example, those stated by API. Uh, and again, there is a strong dependence on specific speed. So the benefit is maximum for low flow and high end application. And of course, in services where cold and clean fluid are handled, so where clearances can be easily re reduced without jeopardizing the pump reliability. Of course, specific material uh, or coatings are available to mitigate uh, uh, eventual air contact between rotating and stationary parts. As we mentioned before, pump efficiency can be also improved by smoothing the hydraulic passages and therefore minimizing the friction losses in the impeller and in the volume diffusers. So faces can be either polished with a mechanical, chemical, or combined processes, or by the application of coatings and lining, as the one shown in blue on the right side of the slide. So efficiency gain due to impeller polishing depends on a variety of factors. One of the most important is the starting status, let me say. So the starting condition of the surfaces that are going to be polished, and their accessibility. So there is a requirement to operate on this surface. As a rule of thumb, an increase of uh, one and a half, three percent uh, of efficiency uh, increase can be obtained by polishing the impeller. Surfaces can be also be smoothed by applying the lining or coatings both to impeller and casing, just like the one shown in this slide. Uh, so considering lining and coatings, it is important also to mention that the coating can be very hard and they increase the protection to abrasion and they can also improve the anti-corrosive characteristic of the base material. So as with the impeller polishing, improvement uh, on efficiency strongly depends uh, on the starting condition 
And uh, it's important to recall that uh, the benefit of uh, lining the coatings is not limited to the increase of pump efficiency only, but thanks to their anti-abrasion and anti-corrosion properties, they also extend the pump life to the components to which they are applied. So they are reducing the needs of spares and extending uh, pump life. Okay, now let's move on activities performing the base of the previous scheme. This is a show with a case regarding the modification of vertical cooling water pump installed in a thermal plant. This pump originally supplied by Trillium Flow Technology on the basis of PC specification, which are defined the performances. When the plant comes in stable operation, the real performances result different from the designed one, with a remarkable reduction of normal flow rate required by the system. Moreover, the suction pit design combined with the pump operation generates surface vortex. The result of the above is the premature wearing of impeller blades, a vibration of the structure, and high energy consumption compared with the effective performance needed. To solve this, our technician come to the site, analyze the performance with the, the type of damages on the impeller blade and other relevant data. We analyzed the situation and emitted a solution report shared with the customer with indication of cause, resolution action, and expected benefit. In fact, the pump operates a lower capacity by the valve trimming regulation below the normal level flow rate. This causes recirculation and impeller blade erosion and vibration. Moreover, the pump absorbed the power energy than effectively required by the system due by regulation valve losses. The solution, as shown in the graph, has been defined, identified by the internal trimming. We had calculated the correct system curves at various valve operate openings and we established a new impeller with a reduced diameter to obtain the following effect. The first one is recentering the pump operating near the best efficiency point, moving away from the circulation area also. The second is to reduce the valve closing percentage, reducing the head of the pump and saving the relevant energy consumed. In addition, <coughs> we have hardened <coughs> the blades of the impeller with a metal coating, increasing the impeller resistance at the surface vortex in the suction channel. The combination of the above factors give a saving of plant over 10% respect to the original situation. The saving has been estimated in 940 megawatt hour for year for each pump that equal approximately to $70,000 for years with a return of investment of these activities in less than one year for each pump operation. We're going to talk now a different means to reduce OPEX and increase viability. Okay, so the key point here is to achieve the optimum level of maintenance for which the pump operates at its best and with a minimum risk of service disruption and achievement uh, and availability. So regular maintenance um, has proven to be effective uh, in practice in sustaining operation and avoiding costs associated to more severe equipment failure. Furthermore, the extending the equipment life uh, ensures uh, more productive hours and delays the need of new equipment, uh, again results, uh, in, uh, resulting in cost reduction. It is of course important to focus uh, on critical machine and identify opportunity of improvement that can be generally classified under two main categories. So material upgrades at first, so which is an improvement by choosing the best material to maximize the equipment life or reducing the needs of spares, or design upgrades, which is changing the pump, uh, the pump design, keeping the same hydraulic performance, so that the pump uh, achieves a smoother life uh, under severe operating condition, and again, reduces the amount uh, of spares and maintenance required. So let's focus on material upgrades. So depending on each specific component, there are different criteria for material selection, and therefore different criteria for material optimization that should be considered. For pressure boundary components, uh, mechanical strength is, of course, uh, an important characteristic for a material selection. And more generally, all wetted parts uh, should consider the resistance to corrosion and abrasion, especially when the pump fluid is chemically aggressive or contain particles that can accelerate the erosion phenomenon. A specific mention should be made also for material selection for wear rings uh, and generally for bashings. Uh, 
the material selection here shall consider the hardness of the material, the friction coefficient, the capability to uh, support dry running of the pump, so with uh, uh, not optimal lubrication condition. Uh, and best material can be selected for each specific application in this component with a direct effect on their durability of these wear parts uh, uh, that have a, a direct uh, and big impact on the total amount of spare costs. Talking about mechanical upgrades uh, generally, so there are several important choices to be made uh, other than the hydraulic selection of the pump uh, to configure the ideal pump for a specific uh, application. And all of this feature represents a change, uh, a chance also to upgrade a pump, uh, increasing its availability. First of all, the type of the bearing and lubrication. So again, depending on the application, the uh, selection shall be made between uh, oil buff, uh, oil ring, uh, flinger, or more sophisticated system, uh, ensuring high cleanliness of lubricating oil, such as the pure or poor joint mist. Then for more demanding application, hydrodynamic bearings uh, uh, come into play. They are very useful to limit uh, uh, the needs of maintenance of the bearings and keep equipment alive at its uh, maximum. Then just like uh, oil cleanliness, also the cooling, you can also uh, increase the bearing life. And again, there are options available between air fan or water cooling inserts. Uh, for bearing out. When operating in very cold environment, uh, no heater can also be uh, beneficial uh, to avoid damages of the bearings at the pump startup. Last but not least, uh, sorry, Marco. We, uh, special, we have to mention also, mention also the sealing system that plays uh, an important role in pump availability. And again, a uh, core selection or uh, of piking or mechanical sealing uh, and auxiliary plant can have a huge impact on pump availability and maintenance cost. This last point, I'll leave uh, the word game back to Marco. Thank you, Alessandro. Now, we'll illustrate some other two case studies on the previous topics illustrated by Alessandro. In this case study, we're presenting now ideas with BB5 boiler feed pump, whose installation was suffering a lower PSH available compared to other installed pumps unit. At the same time, the pump was not considering 100% reliable because of high temperature of anti-friction bearing and the cavitation and erosion phenomena that were discovered during the pump overall. After visiting the power technician on the site, the solution proposed by Trillium comprised the following. A new double suction per stage impeller that was optimized for an PSH so that the cavitation could be avoided. An upgrading of bearing housing type from multi-friction to a sleeve ball configuration that consists mainly in anti-friction thrust bearing and hydrodynamic radial bearing. And a pump internal material upgrade from carbon steel to 12% chromium steel, stainless steel, plus an upgraded of the internal sealing pressure feature between diffuser that including O-rings. The modification were tested at our testing facilities testing center to demonstrate an PSH performance and direct assistance provided on site for installation of new part provided customer turnkey solution. The key point of this modification was the redesign of the impeller in order to avoid the cavitation. That this that's been carried out thanks to a state of art CFD technique. The images show comparison between vapor volume in solid blue, both in original and new impeller, where it's specifically reduced as shown in this comparison. The result of simulation were verified at our testing facility by NPSH testing. The improvement allowed for a cavitation free operation and the consequent increase of reliability and equipment viability. The image on the right showed a new modified in parallel, the original one compared. The last third example is the relevant to an old BB1 pump installed in an oil storage facility in Italy. In this case, the pump suffered from a lack of correct maintenance in the year and present heavy damages and operational problems. Before changing completely, replacing it, the customer asked Trillium to analyze the situation and propose a suitable repairing solution. The pump at the opening presented a diffuser corrosion in the static part, an high erosion of the wear ring seat area with a complete destruction of the profiles. In addition, the impeller was made in cast iron material 
and in the years was damaged by corrosion and erosion. In the past, was lined by third party with a plastic cover to prevent them, protect them, modify the hydraulic profile, and wrongly balanced using a metal plate application. Trillium proposed to customer to repair the pump, saving the casing and shafts, redesign where ring sit in order to rework them and permit a correct modifier design ring installation, as shown here. All the surfaces are uh, all the surfaces are uh, repaired and then are coated with a proactive material, improving also the surface finishing. Finally, we are proposed to modify the impeller material with upgrade bronze to match correctly operating condition. The final result is shown here. Actually, the pump is in operation with a new life expected and considerable saving term of direct operation with increasing the pump efficiency and direct saving like the pump complete replacement with an estimated saving of over five tons of CO2 emitted equal to more than 50,000 kilometers traveled by a normal car. Now, after showing various aspects linked with the OPEX CO2 reduction in pumping system and also practical case illustration, we present here a trillion proposal methodology based on experience to optimize existing system through which they made the previous show example. The trillion way is a circular system completely integrated that supports our customer from the definition of the solution to the certification to implement the modification through a site analysis, full testing campaigns, and manufacturing and also certification. In the first phase, we meet the customer and we define what is the actual situation and what is expected in terms of saving. To do this, it's necessary to collect the operation and mechanical data, mainly but not limited to pump or original design data, like curves, mechanical, installation, etc., and pump actual data, like real operating parameter, eventual mechanical modification, analysis of abbreviation, noise, etc. After that, a preliminary study is carried out, identify the critical points, and propose a tailor-made solution. In the study is included a forecast of expected gain in terms of energy and other improvement elements. This report is then discussed with the customer to optimize the solution and achieve the expected uh, result for the client. Once the preliminary project is approved and the project become operative, the second phase starts. Before any other action, our technician come again on site with all the necessary calibrate and certify instrument and perform a complete set of measurement performance to establish definitive pump characteristic and mechanical to identify eventual interface with the modification. This analysis shall be then repeated in our testing center and workshop using more accurate instrument and device in order to fix the point zero as base to measure the improvement. All the data collected and the result shall included in a final as is report to be shared with the customer and eventually used by the client to start the process to collect found or credits. The third phase is done partially in parallel with the second one. In this part, Trillium studies the detailed new configuration and produces all the documents and drawings to implement it. Once the design and calculation phase is finished, the manufacturing activity starts. Once the original equipment comes to our workshop for the final test and measurement, the upgrading modification kit is ready to be implemented, reducing at this minimum the pump and an availability on site. Finally, the upgraded unit is tested in our testing center with the maximum grade of accuracy. The equipment is then shipped on site and then repeated the testing to confirm the result of our testing center. On site, our certified auditor will perform all the measurements necessary and emit a final report. This report will shall be used by the customer to obtain the found and credit linked with the improvement achievement. Now let's now summarize what is discussed today. We had shown the importance of pump operation in the total life cycle cost, examining the factors that directly and directly acts on the OPEX reduction. Then we had described the Trillium operational scheme to approach these topics to satisfy the customer need and to assure the best result. Illustrating also three short case studies that have been implemented following our method, demonstrating our capability to support and implement a tailor-made solution for our customer. Now we come to the end of our presentation, and we have, I think, uh, some time for question and answer. If you have any other question or clarification, 
please also contact us using the QR code showed here or the social media official channel. Thank you for your attention. Okay, now let us check the question. Uh, the first question is, um, is Trillium Flow Technology aftermarket offer free rate retrofit and maintenance dedicated to this own pound brand only? Okay, uh, the answer is uh, clearly no. Uh, thanks our extensive experience and service uh, uh, and pump this as pump designer and producer, Trillium Flow Technology is capable to serve uh, almost all the centrifugal pump and pumping system. Uh, moreover, clearly through our R&D department, the aftermarket engineer department, we are able to redesign part of all the pumps that are not have an active assistance or not have an existing uh, uh, producer that is able to support the customer. In this way, we are also able not only to copy, but to improve the original design of the components. We are uh, able to uh, replace single components or, or part of pump, for example, hydraulics, or all the complete pump or complete uh, pumping system also, modifying some element, adding some element, and improving all the system generally. Uh, okay, I hope that this uh, should be exhaustive. Let me check for our other question. Marco, yes, we mm. do have a question. The question is, uh, if we need to reduce the clearance in the wear rings to increase efficiency in the pump, uh, what is the maximum re the reduction in the clearance of wear rings uh, that we recommend? So the question is, of course, uh, it depends on the specific application and the starting point. So first of all, we should consider the type of the pump we are talking about, uh, if it is an overhang, if it is a between bearing, single stage or multi-stage, as a rule of thumb, uh, and let's consider that would be starting from uh, uh, standard HI or API recommended clearance, the reduction up to 50-60% uh, of these clearance uh, are generally feasible. Then, of course, uh, there uh, could be uh, upgrades uh, in the material of the wear rings uh, and bushings uh, uh, so that uh, you, we can keep the reliability of, of the pump and keep the, the life uh, at, at its maximum. So, uh, uh, as always in engineering, the correct, the correct answer is uh, it depends, uh, but uh, as a rule of thumb, uh, reduction up to 50-60% of uh, <coughs> general industry practice uh, are feasible. Of course, okay. we can contact uh, three new flow technologies to study uh, this specific application. There are another question. Hi, regarding case study three, where BB1 pump was modified. What was the application and which pump was installed in early term? Which pump was installed in early term? Okay, basically, uh, this pump are uh, cooling tower pumps. It means that uh, are uh, pumping water, normally cooling water by a tower. Uh, in the past, uh, the quality of the water uh, was different. Uh, so at the beginning of the building of this uh, terminal in the 60, 50, 60 approximately, the, 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 the water used uh, was uh, uh, very clean. Uh, during the years, uh, uh, the availability of clean water, uh, the cost to clean the water, have uh, modified the quality of these means and uh, reduced the, 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 the quality also, uh, introducing uh, pollution elements and so on. Uh, considering this, the original specification, uh, which the pump was done in cast iron mainly, uh, now are not uh, still applicable and uh, are more. Um, dedicated uh, suitable material have been selected in bronze considering the actual water characteristic of the, the pumps. I think that also this is uh, been answered. Uh, if we have some time, I think yes, we have another uh, question. Uh, regarding the variable speed device, there are special difference between hydraulic coupling and variable frequency drive. And what are the typical application case? Ah, okay, um, is is a complex question, <laughs> clearly. Uh, 
generally it depends on the application and on the site installation what is what i mean so hydraulic coupling is normally a mechanical system that is reliable uh, very stable um, not very complex to use and is generally used but not not only but generally used the multi-stage high pressure pumps like boiler feed water uh, the variable speed for the variable frequency drive instead is a um, electronic uh, systems that is integrated in the power line uh, require certain uh, specific knowledge in electrical and uh, electric system field if more sophisticated probably have uh, some advantages in terms of uh, uh, regulation uh, speed of regulation so on uh, uh, flexibility etc and it's mainly applicated in uh, low power pumps and vertical pumps which are not existing uh, or is not very common hydraulic coupling clearly the application of one or rotor is not only linked with this but linked with the space availability um, system availability net uh, the net electrical grid characteristics uh, space availability to place uh, the WFD or uh, on the cabinets or the necessity to uh, install a um, container, dedicated container or space availability to install the, the, the hydraulic coupling. We are able generally to implement this clearly in a new unit, but also in existing unit for WFD, but not only, mainly also for hydraulic coupling that are uh, they require a modification of the pumping skid we are uh, cap capable to do a turn complete turnkey project from the design system to implementation also on site with the civil electrical and mechanical modification of the pumping unit okay uh, we have just the time i think for another question yes we have a, a last we can apply to a last mm. question what will be approximately the cost of pump re-rate or upgrades in terms of a percentage of a new pump cost? So uh, again, as we have seen in this webinar, each system has to be analyzed uh, on a case by case. So the, a pump re-rate uh, can be definitely less expensive. So for example, in most of the cases, in just uh, the same pump casing, we can fit different impellers. So the ratio is uh, the cost of an impeller versus the cost of a pump. So usually these uh, intervention are definitely less expensive. So it's hard to give a percentage. Of course, it depends on the type of, of, the, of the pump uh, we are considering, but it's uh, definitely a small fraction of the cost of the unit. And uh, we encourage uh, you to, uh, to definitely uh, get in contact with our uh, service uh, division and our service network so that we can investigate uh, your uh, particular case. And uh, we also encourage to evaluate all these uh, improvements in the system, not only as the cost of the initial modification, but in terms of uh, saving of the energy uh, that these uh, changes uh, we will provide so the most of the time the return of the investment uh, of uh, this type of intervention is very very short so uh, one two three years and you probably pay back completely your gaining money from the re-rating and the uh, let me say upgrade of the system okay thank you again for your attention uh, i hope to see you another uh webinar or personally for other occasion. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye.